maybe a fourth. They're coming at him, he's beat six and seven. Top the ball versus Brendan Eight. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. First it was Tommy Turbo, then it was Ryan Pappenhausen, and now it's Nathan Cleary on the eve of the Supercoach Finals. One of the big guns has gone down. It's left us all reeling. Ryan Selvage and Tommy Hudson here with you to talk everything. Nathan Cleary and so much more heading into round 21. Tommy, the curse, it's struck again. Yeah, g'day, Ryan. Ridiculous, isn't it? They say everything happens in threes, and we've probably lost the three best super coach players heading into this season. They're all gone now for the rest of the year. Uh, Cleary hurts as well, I think, because a lot of people, including myself, don't have any trades left. So it's, it's left people at a bit of a loss. Now, of course, uh, we're going to talk round 21, but also the first week of super coach finals. Um, and probably no better point there to kick us off, Nathan Cleary. He would have gone pick two at worst in most draft leagues, and obviously Tommy Turbo would have commanded that number one seed. But, I mean, it has big implications, doesn't it? You mentioned it there, lack of trades. Uh, but it's going to affect all players here, classic end draft. Yeah, well, I, I don't know the exact figure of ownership of Cleary. It would have been very high in our classic, probably would have been probably the most popular player. Only a few people I know didn't go to him and they're laughing at the moment. But I guess even after Cleary's injury, you're looking at your replacements and one of the replacements you could have went to, Moses also injured for probably the rest of the Supercoach year. Yeah, some big news on the injury front. Uh, Moses expected to miss, I think it's up to five weeks, uh, maybe back inside four. But uh, yeah, looking at that halfback slot, we'll uh, talk all of that, obviously, as we get into our game-by-game previews here. Um, and still on that, for, uh, some fallout from last week, um, I guess the big news, and it's happening at the judiciary as we go to air tonight on Tuesday, uh, Paddy Carrigan, he looks uh, set to spend some time on the sideline for a nasty hip drop tackle on Jackson Hastings. Yeah, it wasn't good, this one. I know everyone says, you know, it's not his go, not his go. It probably isn't his go, but it was just a bit ugly, I think. It was a bit of a wrestling move, so he might be out until the finals, uh, NRL finals, and probably hurting those who haven't been super coach as well. Yeah, definitely me, and uh, I mean, for our own little draft league, Tommy and I are actually going up against each other this week, one versus four. Uh, no secret to finish top seed there, but uh, I guess, yeah, implications far and wide. It is uh, just a little more in our draft. You've got Munster against the Titans, I've got Latrell against the Warriors, so it's a battle of the Titans there, for sure. It could get very ugly very quickly for me Saturday afternoon. Uh, speaking of ugly, Tommy, and mentioning that tackle there of... Uh, Paddy Carrigan, that was ugly indeed. Let's do this, our good, bad, and our ugly from round 20. Quick recap of how we fared as well amongst all of this. I'll kick us off, waste no time here. Um, the good for me in a week of not too good. Uh, the gun forwards, they just keep delivering, don't they? Um, Isaiah Papali'i probably heads that list. Um, Tarpane, another one down there from the Raiders. So these big guns uh, up front, and they're just really propping up our scores. Absolutely, I probably that's probably my highlight of the weekend as well. Uh, but I'll go someone else. Sifatalikai, he only got sixty, but I'm just going to say I think we were starting to see signs of what we saw at the start of the year. And with the Sharkies run coming up, really good run the last five weeks, I think uh, things looking up for Talakai. Forever the true believers. If you're still hanging on to Sifatalikai this time of year after a year of uh, up and down, um, my bad. I didn't play Scotty Drinkwater now. I mean, I should have known this. Uh, last time he scored a 30, earlier in the season, he came out and banged out 112. I looked at this, and how do I know that? Because I looked at it myself this time last week. He scored a 30-odd against, uh, who was it up there? Uh, anyway, round 19, scored a 30. No good. I decided to bench him, and sure enough, he comes out and tons up against the Dragons. So that's got to be my bad for this week. Yeah, it was against West Tigers when he was sort of, I think was hooked, really, with 15 yeah. minutes to go there. So... He definitely bounced back with a vengeance on Sunday. Played really well. My bad was probably Matty Burton. I ended up captaining him. Um, and obviously, it would have been worse if I captained Cleary. But still, Burton on paper looked like a good game for him. He only got 45. Just wasn't that involved in their play. Uh, so it was a little bit disappointing on Sunday afternoon for myself. And the ugly for mine has to be Nathan Cleary. Not only that, but uh, I've broken my trade rules. I've sat here all year. I've preached, no, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to hang on. And Temptation got the best of me. I actually used my last trade boost uh, a couple of weeks back to get in James Tedesco and Payne Haas. Um, it could have even been last week, actually, uh, that I ended up doing that. And then sure enough, I've got one trade left, and it probably is going to be spent on Nathan Cleary. So round 21, I'm going to have to play the next four weeks, potentially, uh, with a duck egg there next to the trades column. 
We'll talk about this a bit more later, but are you tempted to just leave Cleary on your bench? Obviously, you're not playing, and then just mm. fill your 17 with other players and just wait until you need to make another trade, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, potentially, uh, because it's a forced trade, and it's one that you know some others may juggle uh, that exact play there as well, leaving Cleary. Yeah, we will talk that in our Trading Places segment at the back end of the podcast. Now, if you are listening to us tonight across your podcast, Spotify, Apple, or elsewhere. Don't forget, you can get us on YouTube at well, as well, I should say. Just search at Supercoach365. Uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and comment as well. Uh, we're going to probably get into this a little bit more um, throughout the final series, and obviously some head-to-head finals coming up, grand finals to look forward to in the next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, we'll hope to pass on some advice uh, where we can. Before we jump into round 21, Tommy, let's just recap our scores in our ranks um, at the end of 20 rounds. Uh, another red arrow for you this week, but you must still be happy with sort of where you're sitting at the end of, as we say, 20 weeks. Uh, sort of. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm down to 630th. Um, I think three or four weeks in a row of red arrows now. It's just the dreams of 50k are long gone. <laughs> just trying to hold on to a top thousand spot. Uh, two trades left, so hope for the best. How'd you go? Uh, yeah, a score of around 11.70, I think it was, um, last week. So not overly disappointing, um, given that I did leave some points on my bench in Scotty Drinkwater. Uh, still 5% overall, so hanging around there, not making too much ground. Although in saying that, a green arrow last week uh, and a change of 403. So, I mean, a green arrow week, not too bad, but... Um, Anyway, on to round 21, and this is where we go. Uh, This uh, Thursday night, it is the Roosters back at home. Uh, The cricket ground, the venue here. Uh, One of their last games at the cricket ground. They've actually got a couple of home games coming up, though. Up against the Broncos. Uh, Importantly for the Broncos, Adam Reynolds named to play jersey number seven, despite that HIA concern uh, just, well, it would have been, what, six days ago heading into this one. Yeah, important for him to be there. He's the heart and soul of that. That side, he wasn't great the other night, but obviously that head injury may have played a part there. Uh, the Roosters, speaking of head injuries, Lindsay Collins with another one. Uh, I fear, fear that he may not play again this year, given the Roosters' history with concussions in their players. Yeah, what a timely signing Matt Lodge uh, may have turned out to have been on the eve of the finals. Something we didn't mention, and we won't go too far into it uh, in this game, but the loan system as well. So, I mean, we will talk that when we get to perhaps the next game on Friday night when we get to uh, David Nofaluma. Before we do, though, Roosters here with topsport.com.au, $1.60 head-to-head. So favourites in this one, Broncos outsiders, $2.38. The line, 4.5. For the Broncos as well, uh, rather the Roosters, I should say, probably expected to win more handsomely than they did against the Seagulls last week, and that's probably disappointing for those who did go towards Tedesco, Tupo, perhaps Sawali as well. Yeah, they probably were a little underwhelming given Manly's outs. I think we thought we'd get a bigger score from Tedesco. I think he only got 72. Manu's Manu's still got 101, and he just seems to get effortless scores at the moment. Uh, Whether or not it's actually helping the Roosters attack, I don't know. I feel like maybe he's getting a little too involved almost, but... um, Super coaches aren't complaining, that's for sure. Yeah, continues to turn up. Uh, good news for the Broncos. Selwyn Cobbo back as well, so adding some strike down that right side. Uh, and Katoni Staggs lines up against Dean Mariner, who made his debut in the centres last week. Uh, retains his spot there. Obviously, they're going to be without Paddy Carrigan, though. That's the big blow. Um, and for the Broncos, it's just a matter of how many weeks now, because, as we say, at the judiciary tonight, and he's probably facing a fair stint on the sidelines. Yeah, you'd have to think he'd probably be gone for maybe a month. Uh, opens the door for Kobe Hetherington, come in to start lock. I think it might just mean more work for Payne Haas, and those who own him are probably going to see even higher scores. He's been back in great form lately. But uh, I don't know how long he can do this during his career because his work rate is just ridiculous. Yeah, last time the Broncos, I think it was... Um maybe not the last time, but the first time that they played without Carrigan when he was injured after that MCL against the Warriors earlier in the year. Haas played, I think, upwards of 70 minutes, um, 70 points, pure base. So you can probably expect the the same there. Kobe Hetherington, a name you mentioned. I'm not overly sold on him um, this week. I don't know what his minutes will be like. Maybe one for draft comps that we've spoken of already, but I wouldn't be diving into him. Um, Tommy Flegler as well probably sees an uptick in minutes and probably uh, points there as well. So if they are on your waivers tonight, probably lean towards uh, Flegler if he is available. Uh, Keenan Palacio as well, um, a big chance of playing more minutes. So um, that's where I'd be looking if I'm playing the waivers uh, at the Broncos. Yeah, lots of Brisbane forwards, I guess, going to get their time to shine with 
Carrigan out and obviously Matty Lodge if he's still a free agent maybe look at him in terms of the betting like you said uh minus four and a half for the Roosters I was pretty disappointed with Brisbane against West last week so I think I will probably probably lean the way of the Roosters in what is a must-win game really to make the top eight yeah, don't overcomplicate it for mine. Just dollar sixty. Put it in your multis this week. They should be winning um, back at home, as we say. And I think they're playing with a real purpose now. The Roosters. It wasn't their cleanest performance last week against the Seagulls, but did enough to get it done. Um, and expect them to continue on in winning ways. Uh, here, we'll be hoping to say the same about the Melbourne Storm in terms of our top sports season multi. Obviously, we need them in the top four. So a win here against the Titans on Friday afternoon would go a long way towards that. But without Nick Meaney now as well, uh, it's going to be a, a more difficult prospect here. It's a complete no-name backline yet again, isn't it? Tyron Wishart starting at fullback, who's, I guess, but he's played every position for the Storm this year, really. David Nofaluma joins the side, and then you've still got Seve, Anderson, and Eremaya. So it's really thrown together backline, uh, obviously topped off by Munster and Hughes, which really make up for that, don't they? Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if Munster plays a bit like that Joey Manu roving sort of fullback 5'8 role. Like, I know he's named in the six here, but Wishart did come through playing a lot uh, of his junior footy through the halves and at hooker uh, more recently. So I wouldn't be uh, entirely shocked if they swapped throughout the game and you see Munster get back and, and return the ball at different stages. Um, Nelson Asofa Solomona, perhaps surprisingly, um, escapes the charge for that uh, hit on Wade Egan. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking at this, the the, the Melbourne Storm, a dollar eleven, topsport.com.au, sixteen and a half the line. Tommy, I know you're pretty keen on the Storm racking up a score hit. Well, I just there's so many things that point to it. I think the Storm started to show a little bit more form the other day against the Warriors. The Titans haven't been able to defend all year, and uh, obviously the Storm have been, you know, four losses and then a win away to the Warriors. They're back at home. It's got all the makings of a big score, but I do think this backline. You know, it doesn't thrill you with confidence. Um, Brandon Smith on the bench. Xavier Coates in the reserves. He could be a late inclusion, perhaps. And look, there's not many. Would he go fullback, maybe? Could he be a, a bit of a, a chance to be fullback instead of Wishart? Or no, David Nofaloom even as a fullback? I feel like that fullback slot is going to change before uh, we kick off. Yeah, we've seen this a couple of times already with Wishart this year, haven't we? Named to you know, start on the wing or in the halves, and he's always reverting back to um, the bench. Just on the Titans, I uh, look at across at jersey number seven. No Toby Sexton. He's been uh, in inverted commas here rested. So we're we reading into that. Um, just thinking back seven months now as we're doing our preseason planning, Toby Sexton was a, a pretty hot uh, piece of commodity uh, to start the year, but it's sort of fallen off this year. Well, I started the year with Toby Sexton actually in Supercoach. He did okay the first few weeks, but yeah, he hasn't been great. Uh, the rest of the time for the Titans. But they've gone back to AJ Brimson at 5'8", which wasn't the answer at the start of the year, and now they've gone back to it. So I don't really know what Holbrook... I don't think he knows what to do, to be honest. I think he's at a bit of a loss. So, yeah, good luck to them on Friday night, because I think they'll need it. Just throwing the the, uh, cards in the air and seeing uh, where they land. Um, The Titans there, if you do like a bit of value, $6.75, probably not enough still, topsport.com.au. Um, they will be winning that one. The Storm, just a matter of uh, by how much. Brandon Smith, obviously a big name. You've mentioned him there to come back. Um, and Nofaluma, yeah, look, I hope he goes well at his new club, um, at least for the next six or so weeks. He gets to play finals footy. So um, good luck to he down there in his loan spell at the Storm. Uh, next game here, Friday night, the Seagulls uh, back at home against the Eels. Um, they get their, their players back who have, self-imposed resting, I guess, the week before. Uh, the Eels, though, that they're without their main man in Mitchell Moses. Yeah, huge loss. I think we spoke about, obviously, Cleary being a loss for Penrith and a loss for Supercoach. I think Moses is as big a loss of, for Para as uh, Cleary is for Penrith. He, he's so important to that side. And, you know, Jake Arthur is a bit of a polarising figure. Even his own fans have booed him in the past. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how he steps up to the plate and leads this team in towards the finals. Probably not Supercoach related, but what are we making of Josh Schuster, Jersey 18? Can't even get a go now. Um, names in front of him, Ben Trevojevic, Morgan Boyle, even in the starting side where he was so good last year. Andrew Davies been holding down that left edge spot. So he's just fallen completely off the face of the cliff here at uh, Manly's Joshy Schuster. Yeah, massive surprise given how integral he was last year, really, in Manly charging towards the finals. Uh, he just hasn't... He's had the same sort of impact this year, but I think he's got too many errors in his game, and 
I don't know. I think I've heard a few things that he's a bit of a, a handful off the field as well. So, look, maybe he needs a bit of time away from first grade to mature a little bit more. Dollar uh, seventy eight here. The Seagulls at home. That looks a, a, a good go there for mine. I'm pretty confident they get the win there. Parramatta, obviously, without their main man Moses. Uh, if you do like the Eels away from home, two dollars and five. Uh, they're getting a one and a half point start with topsport.com.au as well. So gamble responsibly if you're ha- having a go on that game there. Um, are we interested in any of the eels there, um, or potentially even Cherry Evans to replace Cleary? Um, Manly, I think we keep speaking of this good run. Is DC a, a serious option now that Cleary's not there? Yeah, well, he does come into calculations. I suppose the man we didn't mention from previous game, Jerome Hughes, is also comes into calculations at the moment. You're probably going to one of them if you if you're deciding to uh, replace Nathan Cleary, Cherry Evans of late, up and down. He's had a few scores of a hundred, but then he does have a bit of a, a score of thirty in him as well. So, yep. Parramatta, Titans, Sharks, Raiders, Bulldogs. They last five. There's probably three or four good games in there. So he's he's definitely a decent option. DCE. And uh, yeah, definitely one that you could look for. Um, potentially even if you if you are playing with Nico Hines in your team still. Uh, dual position and may open up the door for a fullback as well. Clint Gutherson, I think, could be an option. Um, scored a couple of, um, well, better scores than he had been scoring previously to the last couple of weeks. But in saying that now, I think he takes the goal kicking uh, with Moses gone for the next month as well. So Gutho may be a sneaky pod there at the fullback slot. Nothing else there for mine, Tommy. Uh, what about you? No, let's push on. No, not really. I'm not too hot on Gutho, personally. Like I'm, I respect what you're saying, but they do have a hard run in, and without Moses, I'm worried about where they're going to find their points. No, fair play. Um, speaking of points, I think there'll be plenty in this one. The Rabbitohs and the Warriors, Saturday afternoon footy. Personally, I'm praying for rain because as a, as a, as a coming up against Latrell Mitchell in draft against the Warriors, it's very scary. Um, but here, the Rabbitohs, uh, Sunshine Coast, the, the stadium, uh, this is where this one's at. Uh, disappointing, I think, yeah, Latrell I, last week. It probably was a little bit, uh, especially, I guess, just topped off by the... I think he missed three field goal attempts, and yeah. he's such a clutch player generally. We probably just thought he would slot it at the first attempt, but it wasn't to be. Uh, I wonder if that just sort of adds to, you know, him and Cody Walker, the sort of players they are. They'll just be on the bounce back this week and looking to sort of flog a team. Yeah, it's, it's probably the worst thing that I could have happened uh, to me personally. Latrell just having an off game, uh, the game before I need him to flop. Um, but no, looking at this, you'd think there'd be points there. The Warriors, uh, Reese Walsh is back at fullback. I think he was there last week as well. But Harris Tavita not there in Jersey 6. Wade Egan may be the surprise name to uh, partner Sean Johnson in the halves. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this team. Honestly, I don't think they're all that bad against Melbourne and they've just changed everything Wade Egan at six, never seen that before. Freddie Lussick starting at nine. I, I don't rate him personally. And yeah, Josh Curran probably been their best forward the last few years, only on the bench. Uh, I don't know what they're what they're doing to be honest. Yeah, uh, looks that way with Top Sport as well. South Sydney head to head dollar twelve. You can't touch that. The line seventeen and a half. Maybe I'm I'm getting interested there. Checking the weather on Saturday morning and waking up, and if it's Blue skies and uh, and sunny, then you could be going that way. Alex Johnston, I think you said it here this time last week. He is just a moral. Um, the best bet in sport, you declared him. Well, he just scores every time. He scored, I think, within 10 minutes the other day. Uh, what is he this week? Let's have a look. Dollar $1.40. 40. So that, yeah, he's probably even too short for me there, I think. But, like, honestly, you just know it'll happen. Maybe two or more, even a hat-trick will be on the cards. Just on the south back line, uh, Jed Cartwright, who had been doing... I guess a job for those who chase the cheapy. He's out with a hamstring. Tane Milne replaces him, so he could be in for a trial to himself. Again, yeah, responsibly, um, Tane Milne, just before we push on, $2.74. He'll be the right side center, you think? So if you are keen on that left side with uh, Cody, Luttrell, and obviously AJ, but playing around the big three there, Isaiah Tass could be a sneaky $2.66 anytime. If he's going to get one, this would be the week. Um, not a noted try scorer on that left side, but um, gets another chance here. Uh, next game here would be the Raiders and Penrith. Um, obviously, a Panthers side depleted in the six and the seven. No Luai, no Cleary. And they're running into a pretty, well, I'm going to call them a hot team. Tommy, you may beg to differ, but um, the Raiders, uh, they're, they're finding some form at the right time of the year. Yeah, we're doing what we have to do. Uh, it's got a few points the last few weeks as well, and we need that against Penrith, who I thought even though they, they got beat fairly convincingly the other night, they were pretty good in that second half, uh, mm. just with 12 men. 
yeah, definitely held their own. I think they might have even have won the second half, 6-4 or um, something of that kind. Just looking at this game here, we spoke of Cherry Evans and, and Hughes. I want to throw another name at you. And I can't take credit for this. This is uh, Simon Grunstein, uh, one of our loyal listeners. He says here, what about Jamal Fogarty as the super pod at number seven, uh, being scoring well and, and kicking plenty of goals as well? Yeah, well, I think I mentioned him last week, late in the podcast. I, well, it was very left field, but now with Cleary out, it, it does throw it open. And he's a really good goal kicker. After Penrith, uh, the Raiders have four pretty winnable games, Dragons, Knights, Seagulls, Tigers. So, hey, uh, definitely a pod. And if you're if you're in one of those positions where you're chasing a high rank, he could be yeah. someone to go to, to to get some money. Yeah, and if you did hang on to him in your draft league start of the year, what did he miss? I think it was about the first 12 or so weeks. Um, yeah. with uh, Was it a hip complaint or a, a knee? Something of those kind. I don't know. You, you could tell me more, more. Shoulder. I don't know. Some part of his body, it no, wasn't it was, working. It was a knee. It was a knee. But he slowly got back to form, and him and Whiten are starting to get a, a good... Uh, a good combination, I guess. Just on the halves for Penrith, uh, were you expecting to see Kurt Falls in soft Sean O'Sullivan? I'm surprised that we're seeing Jamin Salmon straight in there at six. Yeah, I mean, I personally thought Falls would be there. I thought he was decent in his game earlier earlier in the year, but um, listening around, I think he's just come back into the New South Wales Cup team on the back of a six-week injury. So maybe that's um, reason enough. Uh, if you're still holding the plenty of Penrith players, such as a Taylor May, Isaac Tung, or potentially even uh, Kikau, who was an option uh, around the bye weeks, Isaiah Yo as well, are you a little bit concerned about the no Cleary, no Luai factor? Because they do, uh, you know, completely change the mindset and the attacking nature of this team. Yeah, I definitely am concerned. I think I own three Penrith players still. Um, so yeah, like most of their attack comes through Luai or Cleary starting that play and neither of them are there now so they're going to have to find new ways to do it and they've got four of the best teams to finish off the year as well so yeah it's, it's definitely a worry but I don't think I have enough trades to do anything about it. $2.30 the Raiders at home uh, Penrith still favourites here which I'm a little bit surprised by $1.60 line at 3.5 so I mean if you're happy to take the uh, the 3.5 star I think you could do worse this weekend than, than get on the Raiders um, a team playing well and um, probably get the benefit of uh, the would-be minor premiers without their two of their best players so that's the way I'd be going yeah it's a bit of a coin flip for me and it's hard when you when you go for one of the teams to have a real strong opinion I think the unders would be my play under 41.5 I think Penrith will turn it into more of a defensive game without their attacking halves sort of thing. And we can't score a lot of points really against good defence. So, unders for me. Rounding us out, Super Saturday, Shark Park, the venue, a local derby here, the Sharks and the Dragons. And in a throwback to yesteryear, we see the surname Dykes on the Sharks team sheet, this time at number one. His father, Adam, of course, uh, more familiar in the six or the seven, but with that injury to Will Kennedy, sparks an opportunity here for Cade Dykes, who's been doing good things for Newtown Jets in the New South Wales Cup, and before that, the Sharks in Jersey flag. So um, Kay Dykes here runs out for the Sharks in what will be a massive game for both teams. Yeah, huge game. Last chance for the Dragons and the Sharks look to continue, I guess, their winning ways. Kay Dykes, I don't know much about him, I must admit. I thought we'd see Lachlan Miller get the fullback jersey given his... I think he ran for 300 metres against the Titans earlier in the year. But yeah, what, do you know anything more about Kay Dykes and why they've gone him over Miller? I mean, I've, I've seen a little bit of him, not a lot, I'll be honest. But, I mean, coming through, he was a half. So, um, I guess sort of in the mould of Tex Hoy in his junior days at Newcastle, he was a half as well. So, maybe just coming in through the grade and um, another one at the Sharks as well, Luke Metcalf played a lot of footy in the 6 and 7, who turned out to be more of a running fullback as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just the style of the modern game. We see it in the 6 there with Matt Moylan. He's gone the other way from 1 to 6 in his career. We see it. It's, it's all but interchangeable, isn't it? Um, that catch and pass either side of the ruck. You've got to be good at it if you are playing fullback. Uh, around that, though, because Dykes will probably be a popular waiver pickup um, this week in, in draft competitions if you are desperate for um, a player of his kind. But um, the Dragons, yeah, I mean, they started well the other day but finished very poorly against the Cowboys. Yeah, they did. And they have done that a few times this year. They've been in games and then just been flogged in the second half. And I think that could be a chance of happening here. And someone like a Nico Hines could be... He hasn't been at his best lately by any means, but maybe he could be back as a captain option. Uh, just on the Sharks, one more. Uh, Cam McInnes, now with Fanukin out for... I think he's another two weeks out. 
Mm-hmm. McInnes immediately last week went up to 78 minutes, 71 base stats. He scored 85 points and had a disallowed try. So, you know, he's scoring back to how he was at the at the peak of his career. So he's definitely one to uh, look at. Now, I was big on uh, Souths last week because of the influence. I kept saying it, Finucane's influence over the Sharks' defense. You can't quantify it. Um, obviously, they ended up winning. It was tight. They probably should have lost that game. Um, they would have been without him um, you know, an even record. I think it would have been 4-4 four and four without Finucane. So, again, yes, uh, McInnes doing good things for the Sharks now. Finucane's not there. Um, but that may still bring the Dragons back into this game. Maybe a little bit of wishful thinking for the Red V. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at captain's options this week, Nico Hines would be a popular pick. Um, later in the week, but uh, definitely not the last game of the week. Let's keep pushing on here. Sunday afternoon, 40, 2 p.m. This one at Bundaberg, a Bulldogs home game. So on the road here in Queensland. Uh, and the Cowboys, again, another game in Queensland. They've had plenty of them. Um, they get a good game here and, and hoping to build upon that win against the Dragons last week. Yeah, and it just screams points again, doesn't it, for these Cowboys backs, Holmes and drink water. Even Tamalolo up front is playing really well, but... You know, I don't own Holmes or drink water, and it's really starting to hurt because either one of them or both is going big nearly every week. Yeah, we saw them link up even last week as well. Scotty Drinkwater, I guess he doesn't have that support of the base that, that Val does and of the goal kicking. Um, but that's why I was so keen on Val a couple of weeks ago because I could see this run of fixtures and all he had to do was come back from origin injury-free, and it looked a, a good thing, um, and he certainly backed that up. And um, Now I think he's upwards of 700000 Valentine Holmes, so really justifying uh, his price tag at the moment. Yeah, he is, and I feel like for myself the, the ship has sailed. I don't have enough trades to get him in. I made my bed by not having him, but it is a regret. I do wish I had him, and it was a great pickup by you and whoever else has got him uh for the doggies matt burton as we said a little bit disappointing last week only getting 45 i do think he's capable of better and uh, look cowboys are obviously a good defensive team but i still think he can score fairly well this week probably not a lot of other super coach relevance i'd say this week for the doggies uh it's more just watch the cowboys players pile on the points perhaps yeah, one for your draft leagues around the dogs. Jackson, I think it's Topine, um, second rower there. 60 base points uh, last week. Um, all tackles. He may have to do a little bit of a defense here against uh, the Cowboys if we expect it to go the way that we do here. Just for the Cowboys on uh, the injury to Kyle Felt. Sees so Hammer go back to a wing, and that obviously has implications for the bench, uh, the way that it is made up with Jake Granville there, the curly-haired clown from North Queensland. He just keeps hanging around. What does that mean for Reese Robson? I'm concerned, and I guess some others who are holding him in classic leagues would be as well, I think. Yeah, for sure. I didn't really think of that, but you're right. Uh, he probably will come on and relieve Robson for a small period of time. Also on that bench, Ruben Cotter. I don't think he ended up returning last week. I could be wrong, but he's definitely back this week. So... Good to see him back, and I'm sure next year he'll be one of the first picked in many classic teams. He will. Um, just on this one, topsport.com.au, the Cowboys, $1.31. Firm favourites here, the Bulldogs Outsiders, uh, $3.50. The line, 10 and a half. Again, probably looking at the weather that uh, that morning and um, diving into the 10 and a half, the minus. I think the Cowboys, they can probably just... Um, show the Bulldogs that their wins in recent weeks, you know, this is another level. They're going to go up a gear and, and rise in grade here. Yeah, it's going to be a painful watch for people who don't own the Cowboys players like myself, and I think it's going to be, yeah, minus 10.5. What about Nano? just before we move on? Um, try scoring sensation. What has he scored? I think he scored 16 in 16 games. Um, they're going to play deep into the finals, the Cowboys. Now, I think if they make it up to the grand final, they'll have about 10 games left. He'll need to go a try a game to equal the record of Steve Menzies. Tries by a forward in a season. Menzies got 26 tries back in 1996. So, now, no, look, it may be a stretch too far, but if he just, you know, goes for two or three this week, suddenly he's, you know, on the path to history. Yeah, and they have a couple of good games coming up still, so it's possible, honestly. And 158 points the other day. Um, I know he scored twice, but still, great output from him. 104 the week prior. He hasn't gone below 70 for a number of weeks. So, yeah, if anyone held on to him after the start of the year, uh, it's paying dividends now. 
I think as soon as I got rid of him, he started playing good footy. But that probably sums up the tale of my year. Um, speaking of things going to absolute shit, what about Newcastle? They just can't buy a win at the moment. Um, and look, they probably start. Yeah, they do. Uh, they start outsiders here against the West Tigers without Hastings, without Brooks. But it doesn't matter because they've got Adam Dewey there, and uh, he is uh, getting back to near his 2021 best. Yeah, I feel like the Tigers are in a good place at the moment. Like, obviously not on the ladder. They're probably coming second last. But just they seem like they have a good vibe around the place. They should have beaten the Cowboys. They beat the Broncos pretty well. I think Adam Dewey, just him coming back to the team has completely changed them. They look a more confident and happy team. And I think they can pull apart this Newcastle side who are just terrible. Jock Madden in the seven for Hastings, who's obviously out with that fractured uh, leg or broken leg. Um, so Madden's there, and I mean, there's probably not too much super coach relevance. Off of he moves uh, to prop with uh, Funua Bole in jersey 13. So uh, if you are playing the cheapy from round 17, um, Bole could be in for some big minutes and maybe even an option as a reserve player on uh, people's benches this weekend. Yeah, he's definitely an option. Um, he wasn't obviously someone I was thinking about prior to this round, but getting the start in the 13 jersey. His points per minute has been pretty decent so far. This is a very favourable game. Uh, I mean, you're probably not looking for cheapies at this time of the year, but he's not the worst. And definitely in draft, if he's on in the free agency, looking at him. Uh, for the Knights, no David Clemmer, which I don't even know if he's injured. I don't know why he's out. It's quite a surprise. It wouldn't be for him because he's probably been the best forward all year. And that would hurt, I guess, a lot of super coaches. I think a lot of people do have him still. And he's been a consistent yeah. scorer all year. Just stinks, doesn't it? I, I mean, something mustn't be right there with Clemmer. Um, obviously, that news during the week that he could have been loaned to Parramatta. So, I don't know. I could be adding up one and one and getting three, but just weird timing, weird circumstances around David Clemmer there. Um, at the Knights, uh, that's where we'll leave it, though, for round 21 at least. We're going to come back to the other side, talk some captains. Uh, other side of this break, that is, uh, of, of course, podcast this year, as it was last year, proudly brought to you by the good folk at topsport.com. Having a bet on sport this week? Top this. Whether you're into cricket and curling or golf and greyhounds, Top Sport will let you on for plenty. And with literally hundreds of markets from your own backyard to the international stage, Top Sport has you well covered. So if you want to get the top odds every time, bet with Top Sport. Top that. Download the app today. Top Sport. Feel the excitement. Don't let the game play. You stay in control. Gamble responsibly. Yeah, welcome back to the Supercoach 365 podcast. Proudly brought to you by topsport.com.au. You can get on, check out all the odds for this weekend as well as uh, the remainder of the NRL season. Uh, before we do talk captains, let's talk some premiership markets. This is where we start. Penrith, they're on the drift, massive drift, out to $2.10. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting the next few weeks. I feel like their price could get out a little bit more because they have a hard run. And I feel like without Luai and Cleary, they might drop a couple of games. So, you know, as long as they're back by the finals, I don't think it'll really matter personally. What price are you happy to get on them? Two dollars ten probably still short at the moment, but I mean, if you, I mean, they're going to be there grand final day, you think? Yeah, if I, I don't know, would they get to two dollars fifty? Was that dreaming? Oh, I don't know. They probably have to lose two games to get out to two dollars fifty. The Cowboys uh, second favourites, uh, seven dollars fifty. I haven't believed in them all year, really, but mm. they really just, they prove you wrong every week almost. Um, they're, they're a genuine title chance, I guess. If you think they finish second, they'll get that first week in Townsville. Probably third week prelim final, if they win that first week, would be, I'm going to say Suncorp without knowing for certain. Um, I doubt they get a prelim in Townsville. $7.50 to finish second, perhaps. Um, no, it's a good bet. The Sharks now into $8.00, the Storm. First time we've seen them not in the top four in this market pretty much the whole year, out to $8.50. The Storm to make the top four. Now, this has uh, pricked my interest a little bit. $2.10. Um, the Storm, so more than even money to finish top four. They got a bit of work to do, but I mean, probably the first time in 20 years we would have got that price about the Storm finishing in the top four. Yeah, absolutely, and that will be shorter after they bet the Gold Coast this week, but then they play four hard teams. So if you're going to bet on that, you bet this week because it'll come in after they bet the Gold Coast. Speaking of short, I've never seen anything this short. Alex Johnston, top try scorer, $1 and one tenth of a cent. 
you're not even getting a cent back for your dollar. So Tristan, come on, mate, open up your purse string a little bit there, buddy. <laughs> oh, it's that's smart though. He's an absolute moral. Unless he breaks his hip or something, he'll be he'll be winning that and winning well. Any other markets we want to look at? Make the top eight. Uh, it's it's a race. It's a good race now. The Raiders two dollars ten. I, I don't think we're as good as the Roosters, Rabbitohs, and Eagles, but we have a very easy run, so we could almost force our way in there. Yeah, plenty of markets. That one there, uh, Raiders, Roosters, toss of the coin. You'd think to finish uh, eighth, seventh, eighth, maybe Parramatta on the drift as well. Obviously, you can check all this out. Topsport.com.au. Plenty of uh, rugby league markets, as we say, not limited to that. You've got all the domestic sport, and of course, Tommy, you and I will be keeping an eye on the EPL coming up uh, very soon. It kicks off uh, this Saturday, in fact. So uh, you can check all that out as well. Topsport.com.au. The only place you'll see it. Uh, let's talk some captains though. Before we do um, start thinking EPL. Nico Hines, we've already mentioned it there, um, probably looks uh, a good pick against the Dragons at home. Um, looking to uh, find three figures still, Nico Hines, but uh, you'd, you'd be a brave man to go against him this week. Yeah, he piqued my interest, probably the top seed for me, but as he, I think it's the sixth game of the round, so pretty late, so he'd be looking for a decent vice captain. And I think Joey Manu on Thursday night, why not? He's going so well, his involvement is so high, and... You know, the Tigers scored 34 against Brisbane the other day, so the Roosters could put on a score themselves if they wanted to. They could, and if you're looking later in the week, you're probably looking towards uh, potentially uh, one of those Cowboys. It could be Drinkwater, Valentine Holmes, uh, or if you are playing it safe uh, to lock down a, a win in your head-to-head leagues, maybe even a Jason Tamalolo uh, if you are looking for a safe 70. But playing the ceiling there, the Cowboys, they've got some options. Yeah, they do. They're they're becoming pretty safe options, really, to go at least a decent score. Um, two others I, I'll throw up uh, for the Storm against the Gold Coast. Cam Munster, perhaps, if they just get on a roll, he could he could definitely go big. And the same sort of logic on Saturday afternoon, Latrell up against the Warriors, uh, goal-kicking as well. He could easily turn up. Two of our draft captains going head-to-head this week in the captain's call. Of course, you can check out that and, I guess, uh, a little bit more of our in-depth preview on your best captain options heading into round 21. At our Instagram, uh, late on Wednesday night, it will be, at Supercoach365. I've got an Oztag grand final to get to uh, tomorrow, so Tommy may be charged with doing the captain's call this week. We'll do our final teams as well. Uh, Before we do settle on our finals teams on Thursday night, let's talk trading places. Tommy, have you got anything for us this week? I think it's the first week all year I haven't made a trade. I could be wrong, but I can't remember another time. Uh, no trades this week, two left. I'm just benching Cleary, obviously, and just going to reserve other players for the moment. Yeah, nothing yet from mine either. Um, I've only got the one left, so as I've said, I've sort of gone out uh, way too early there. I've broken my own rules. We're going to look back on this season in January, February, when we're doing our preview podcasts again for 2023. Jeez, the years are flying. 2023, uh, and we're going to say, oh, I shouldn't have burned our trades too early. The only reason why you're not doing a trade this weekend is because, what have you got, two left, I think you said. So out of necessity almost to hold them. Well, it's just, I know there's still five rounds left. That's still four chances for injury until the last round. So I just feel like... Obviously, I could go from Cleary to someone else, but I don't think there's anyone obvious to go to personally. Um, is that sort of similar thinking to you? I know you only have one left, but you could go to a DC or a Hughes, but I just don't feel the need to. Yeah, they're not they're not you know jumping up and down saying pick me now, are they? Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll talk that as we say. Final teams on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Supercoach three six five Thursday. You'll get it about an hour before kickoff. Uh, in that game between the Roosters and the Broncos. Tommy, let's wrap this up. Uh, before we do, though, there's some listener question and answers. Uh, look, I'll be honest, I put this up about 15 minutes ago because I would forgot to do it earlier today. So we've got about five or six to get through here. Uh, let's start here with jcarrot07 underscore. He said, if you could fix the Tigers, what five things would you do? Look, we might finish on that one because... Um, <laughs> we could uh, need some time to think so we'll push on we'll, we'll cut, get back to that one uh, Blake's Brushworks friend of the show says here Sharks have a, a very easy run Mulatalo or Talakai at the price trade responsibly love it I'm going to go Talakai I know he's been a myth all year but well, not all year but since he went big at the start I think he'll finish the year with a bang 
Uh, Mula Talo for mine, just because I, I can't vouch for Talakai again. I did it once this year, and it, it still burns me. Alex Brigo says here, is Nanai too expensive at 700k? And uh, do we dare trust O'Sullivan and Salmon as Cleary replacements? So maybe playing the draft leagues there. Are we diving into Sauce or Salmon? Uh, well, I have Sauce, but uh, only by chance. And it's, it's worked out well. He's goal kicking as well. I wouldn't go to Salmon. Sauce over Salmon. Uh, Nanai... Maybe. If you have the trades, he's a decent... He'd probably be a pot at this point. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. As you say there, he's scoring well. Hasn't scored under 70 for some time. So um, no reason why you, you shouldn't bring him in now. Although the price, it is getting up. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but what is it? 650, 690K for Nanai? Yeah, 700 thereabouts. So Too much. It, it's not cheap. Yeah. Uh, Lil, Lil Newt X says, Luxury trader here. Cody Walker to drink water and Suwali to Mulatalo or Connor Tracy. So get rid, of, um, get, rid, get rid of Cody. Yeah, look, probably hard to argue. He does have a good game this week, so I'd wait until he plays the Warriors and then maybe trade him. Um, Suwali to Mulatalo or Connor Tracy. Probably Mulatalo. Tracy's good, but Mulatalo's probably got more X Factor. Agree. Uh, Lil New X again, another one here, says... Um, with the Sharks and Cowboys run home. Wow, so he's just expanding upon that last question there. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. Well, they both have good run home, uh, especially the Sharks. I've mentioned heaps of times. I think their last five games, they're all, they'll all start very short price favourites. So go with the Sharks players. Just talking about the Sharks and Cowboys. So I went Katoa over Molotalo. I tried to get smart. I was happy for two or three weeks. Katoa gets done. His season's over. I get smart again, Murray to Alangi. I think as soon as I've touched him, he's, he's not been sighted. So if anyone in North Queensland can put up the um, where is Murray to Alangi on the telegraph poles, I'd be appreciative. All right, Harry Lee 90 says, who is the best option for captain this week, in your opinion? We've sort of already gone over it, but give me give me your top two, Tommy. Yeah, I'm going to vice Latrell and then Captain Hines. I think that's my plan. Uh, will be popular that one Uh, let's go back to the first question five things to fix the Tigers Um, I'll let you kick us off maybe we just go three total Um, you give us the first okay uh, Adam Dewey should be the the solo club captain because I think he's the future of that club and he's a very passionate player Um, they definitely should try to hold on to Jackson Hastings because he's made a big difference there and they should play a lot more games at Campbelltown and I live in Campbelltown, so I'm not biased at all. I asked for one, you gave me three. Uh, the other you said two, three, three each. Oh, sorry, <laughs> oh, three. I'm tigers. passionate about this team. I don't support. Loves the Tigers. Um, the other two for my. No, I agree with you about Campbelltown. They've got you know that whole region pretty much from Liverpool down to Mossvale, which is untapped in rugby league talent. Um, they don't do enough. Anyway, um, get rid of Luke Brooks, and not because I think he's a bad player, but just purely at the price. Um, they just need to shore up and give that money to Dewey. He could be a 10-year player. Um, don't make the same mistakes they made with James Tedesco with Adam Dewey. Um, keep your heart and soul of the club. And the last one, I don't know. I don't really care enough Is Luke to... Brooks that bad? I don't think he is. I think he gets a harsh rap. I really do. I think if he goes to the Dolphins or Knights, he'll, he'll be decent. No, I don't think he's bad. I just think... He's just not repaying the price. And we saw that with Ben Hunt up until this year, right? Like, people were quick to jump down Ben Hunt and, and they wanted to drive him out of uh, the Dragon. Suddenly, he's their best player and winning Origin games on his uh, on his ears. So, anyway, uh, let's leave that one there because uh, you and I, we don't uh, get paid enough to talk about the West Tigers um, for this long. Do we get paid? We do. Thanks to topsport.com.au. Gamble responsibly this weekend. Tommy, uh, you'll be having a play, I know. Um, do it responsibly. Do it top sport. Absolutely, the only way to do it, responsibly and with top support. Uh, five weeks to go, chasing those green arrows all the way to the end. Yeah, stick with us. Good luck in your finals this week. Um, draft, classic, whatever they are, except if your name's Tommy Hudson in your draft leagues. Uh, as we say, Supercoach365 right across your socials at, that's where you'll get us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Enjoy your footy this weekend, and if you can get out to a game, do so as well. Go Cameron Munster. That's the note I want to finish on tonight. Green arrows. Let's see you. See you next week.